Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of Corel Painter Lights. This is Skip Allen. And uh, in the last video, part one, we had finished up making a, uh, a canvas, and we called it Iris Blue for whatever reason. Now, I know most of you will want to start at this point with painting with the brushes without learning all of the rest of the stuff around here. And that's fine because I want you to paint with the brushes. But as we paint a little bit, I'm going to show you a couple of tips about things like this area right up here, which is referred to as the brush control bar. Uh, this is recent brushes. And then this area here is where you select your brushes. So this is the brush selector. And when you open it up, you have the categories. Categories are groups of like brushes on the far left. And you have the variants or brushes that are located in each one of the uh, are located in the acrylics category since that's the one that is selected. Now you heard me use the term variant. The correct term for a brush in Corel Painter Lite or Corel Painter 12 is a variant. Um, but so many people use brushes that it's really kind of interchangeable. So most people will know what you mean when you say brush or variant. Okay, so we've got um, the captured bristle in acrylics set up. What does it do? Well, let's just come over here to the uh, canvas and we have our stylus and we've got a color that's kind of green color and we just begin to paint. And it's just that simple. See, I mean, you can paint as is. Now, as I light, paint lightly, I get a light stroke. And as I increase my pressure, the stroke gets darker and darker till it gets as dark as it possibly can. So if I were to bring that down darker, down to here, and did the same thing, light pressure, and then start increasing my pressure, you would see how I go from light to dark. Now, that's all pressure related. And that's a very important part of Corel. But let's go, let's talk about that in a minute. Let's, let's just open up my uh, brush selector and look down here and grab another brush. How about the wet brush? Well, now let's change color and we'll bring it up to a kind of a, uh, I don't know what color that is. <laughs> But look at what this brush does. Doesn't that look realistic? What it's doing is that it's applying paint. And then as you move out away from the point, you apply the paint. And you don't pick up your stylus. Then you're going to get this uh, trail off or trail out where the brush is beginning to lose paint. And so it begins to pass away uh, to uh, get less and less paint on it as you uh, continue across the canvas, which, which is exactly what happens with uh, traditional watercolor, uh, traditional painting rather than watercolor. And, and this is uh, acrylic. Now, also notice how I can put down that yellow and keep going around and around and it blends it into that red. I wanted more yellow. Just put more down and then don't lift my stylus and begin to blend a bit. See how that works? Isn't that cool? So all of these brushes, let's just go to another one in here. This is an opaque detail brush and so it's going to be smaller and linear uh, in its uh, in the way that it works. So we could draw something with it. There are also drawing brushes that you can use to draw. So see, it's, it's just like, it's almost just like working uh, traditionally that you can sit here and make all these marks. So what I want you to do is to go through all these brushes and just try them out. Here's a uh, core spray. Um, I'm going to reset it just to make sure it's working right. And I'll tell you what it's reset. reset means in a minute. But see, that's like an airbrush, but it has a coarse spray. 
So you'll find that you have tons and tons of these. Now, when you're working with these, you have this property bar. This is called the brush property bar. And there are a lot of little uh, things that you can use to adjust your brushes here. For instance, right now, the size of this brush is 45.8 because uh, that was uh, its default size. But I could reduce the size to 3.5 and see the difference that I get. Or I could increase the size to not that much. <laughs> Let's say about 60%. It will change the color and see it goes out further, you know, has a larger Im impact. I can change the opacity. I can bring the opacity way down. And now it's going to be very light. See how light that is? Where if I increase my opacity back up to 100%, see the difference? So you can change how heavy the paintbrush is applied. Here for this airbrush, you have a thing called spread and flow and feature. Um, the best way to tell you how to go with spread or flow is just try it. Move it up to as high as it'll go and see what happens. See, there's little spread there. If I bring it down all the way to about 2%, I'm getting nothing. So what happened there? Why did my... Oh, there it is. <laughs> what I needed to do or what was happening, but the spread was so high that it was it was further away from the brush. Let me delete the stuff that's on this canvas here. Now, if I hold this brush straight up and down and I begin to paint, you see the the spread is way out there. Now if I I don't remember what the spread was originally. I'm gonna change the flow. I'm gonna increase the flow a lot. And there you go. Let's get closer up and down. And you see that it's it's a stronger brush than it was before. Now, I've changed a number of things here. And, and feature, the higher the feature, the uh, more brushy kind of effects you have. Let's go to a darker color. And here's what this looks like currently. And if I increase my feature, say, to 7%, which is a fair amount, Look at what happens. See, it, it's uh, making a much he uh, heavier document. It's a faster brush, too. It works much faster. Now, to get this back to the right stage, you just want to click the Reset tool. And when you click the Reset tool, it brings it back to its default setting. So now I'm back to the default setting with this brush. And again, light pressure. And as I increase my pressure, the opacity increases. Okay, that's very standard for most brushes. But it's very important that you have your uh, brush settings, uh, you have your brush tracking setting. And I'll talk about that in a minute, minute. Now, just go down the list and play. You'll find some of these FX brushes kind of interesting, like for instance, Distorto, it just distorts the image like that. So you can sit there and, and kind of do some marble-like painting with it. There are a lot of really fun stuff. Um, fairy dust is fun. Let's go up to kind of a light pink. And look at that. It's like <laughs> stars or fairy dust that you put in. I mean, it's just so much fun to go around and play with all of these. Uh, so if you go to Impasto, and we'll stay with Thick Round, and let's go to another color. We'll go to kind of a bright yellow here. And look at that Impasto that you see. See how thick that is and over the top? So you even can paint with really thick paint. Okay, so your assignment after this video is to just go in there and open those brushes up and start playing. Just paint, paint, paint. 
And any changes that you make, you can change the size, you can change the opacity. Now I'm with a different brush, and I have resaturation, bleed, and feature. Well, we talked about feature, uh, but we didn't talk about resaturation. And resaturation is how much brush goes into the, uh, I mean, how much paint goes into the brush. If you take this all the way down to zero, you will not be adding any paint whatsoever, but you will blend or bleed these areas together, but still having an impasto look to it. So see, whatever color it goes over, it begins to blend or bleed that color. These are things you find out by painting. Okay, so do all of that, and then when you're finished with the brush, go ahead and hit Reset Tool. So, you know, the brush is back to its original. But have fun, play around with these brushes, and see what you think about them. I think they're terrific. Alrighty, talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.